you're looking at? Dry and crispy. Isn't that something? Well, today I want to talk to you about why the solution became the problem. Let's jump into it. See these awesome mow lines behind me? I'm teaching my kid how to do this, and it's really going awfully. That's just a side note, and I thought you guys might enjoy that. Okay, but here's what's going on out here, and this is something that I think is important, and I think that all of you should sort of pay attention to. Now, the back lawn area, as you know, is uh, roughly three months old now at this point. I put it down around the middle of July, and you know all the trials that I've had with this has been kind of an issue. About 20 four days ago is roughly the time I shut off the irrigation back here and that was to sort of relegate the water down to the golf green that was growing in down there everything was moving on pretty well up here and I just turned it off so this has not had any water on it aside from a little bit of natural rainfall for the last three and a half weeks and you can see that we've got some areas of dryness patchy dryness but dryness nonetheless. So why is this important? Well, take a look at these roots. So you can see in here, there is some significant root mass, huge. The soil has moisture down relatively deep and the grass on top actually looks really well. So those cores were pulled from certain areas in the lawn that are still quite dark green, like right here. Right down there. And right over here. Now, let's take a look at the dry area roots so you can see what's going on there. Not much. Not much at all. Now, what is consistent between the dry spots here, the dead grass, and the other areas that are not having a problem. Well, I'm glad you asked. So here comes the part of the solution becoming the problem. One of the things that I have up here is low water pressure, and in order to fix that, I ran Hunter MPs right down here, where there's a strip of dry, as well as down the center of the lawn, because I needed to get better head pressure and put the moisture out. And one of the things that I told everyone about was that those were gonna have to run on different times. So I've got rain birds running everywhere else, pop-ups around the edges, and then I've got this center section that's all run on the Hunter MPs. Now those sprinkler heads are fantastic, but their flow rate is considerably lower than the rain birds, and the way that the water is getting down into the ground is totally different as well. So these areas where it's all dried out, even though I have great head-to-head -head coverage and I did adjust the times on that, it wasn't near enough. And so the grass in those areas are suffering. Now, one of the first things that sort of clued me in to what was going on here before is I was getting a significant amount of runoff from these areas. And I figured that it was just because of the drainage and the way that we shaped everything, but it wasn't that. It was that the ground wasn't getting moisture deep enough to hold moisture as everything went through. So I think we need to do a little experiment.
So what do we see? Well, if I pull up the specs on the particular MP rotors that I have, the flow rate is somewhere around 0.73 at, I don't know what PSI. I'll put a link down so that you can see the PDFs on how they have that broken down. But I'm actually getting about 0.55 gallons out of like that 50% spray head. So when I pulled the other one on the Rainbird, I ran out of space in the container at right at 40 seconds, meaning that I was getting about a gallon and a half. Could have been a little bit more, but around a gallon and a half out of the Rainbird. So therein is the problem. Here's basically how these have been set up for the last little while. I've only needed to run about 10 minutes on each station where the Rainbirds are. I was running the MP rotors at about 50% more than that. So 15 uh, minutes is what they were running. And I think at one point I bumped them up to like 18, but that was just when establishment was happening. So I've got heads that are providing one third the water, yet I was only giving it a 50% boost. That's not gonna do it. So these whole sections where I do have good head to head coverage have gotten extremely dry, more dry than the others. So the fun part about this also though, is to kind of see how long we could go with these polymers in place and how much moisture they could hold. So obviously hydrating those is super important and you know, getting water down deep is gonna be the key to doing that. So I've got to catch this area up and so it's time to do that. But what it looks like to me now at this point is I'm only going to be running these MPs for a little while and we'll see, I think maybe it's gonna take probably two or three days for everything to sort of bounce back to where it needs to be, which could be potentially problematic because we have below freezing temperatures hitting here in the next two nights. So I'm probably gonna to have to do a quick drain of the sprinkler system anyway. But alas, no big deal. So today I'm gonna to go ahead and just start needling the water into this area, um, letting it just sort of push down and fix itself. One of the things that I have seen on a lot of sprinkler systems that people have at their homes is that they have mixed heads um, on stations, kind of like I do, or they have heads mixed into the same station, which is never a good thing because flow rates are totally different. So what you're seeing here is like in the professional world, when you go to somebody's house and you say, hey, your lawn is dry, it, uh, it doesn't look good because it's not getting enough water. And somebody says to you, I'm watering at 10 minutes a station or 20 minutes a station, everything gets the same. This is that prime example right here. The setup of the heads, the, to balance out for head pressure, for coverage and all of that kind of stuff is going to give you different water volumes per zone. So maybe we should break that down into inches of water and get a better idea. Here's the math that I'm gonna take you through real quick just to kind of get an idea of what I would need to do and the total minutes I would need to run on anything with these Hunter MPs that I've got up here. So it kind of breaks down like this. A cubic foot holds roughly seven and a half gallons of water, 7.4 or something, okay? So if I wanted to break that down into an inch, I could say 12 square feet, one gallon of water would get me one inch of water all the way down. Now I've got six stations watering up here. So let's just do sort of simple math, which it, it isn't quite accurate, okay? I'd have to really break down the square foot, but let's just say each zone is covering 400 square feet. So at 400 square feet in this equation, we're doing 400 inches of water. We're gonna divide that out uh, by 12, and then we're gonna multiply it by 7.8, and we come up with our number. Okay, so that would be based on a single head. If we divide that out by how many heads are on that station, I have six that would be running at that flow rate. We basically get down to where I need to be running these things for 80, minutes. That means that I have to run it for 120 to get an inch and a half. And now we're talking about like summer watering needs. Maybe sometimes it's going to need two inches. So now I got to water for 160 minutes a week on these particular MP rotor stations. I don't have to do that on the other ones because again, they're getting three times as much water. So really my bump of 50% was having such a deficit by comparison when you take it across the whole lawn and in the areas that that we're supposed to cover. So in order for me to catch this back up, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna plan on getting about two to three inches of water down over the next seven days. That's a lot of run times, but we can do it. So I'm basically gonna have to run it for 240 minutes 
per station that I have the MPs on, which is three stations. That is a crap ton. So that's going to be going on out here, and I'm just going to set it up on my beehive timer and let it just do its thing, work its magic, break down into the soil, and we'll see how this grass rebounds over the course of the next three days. So make sure you're subscribed so you can see the change that happens in the beautiful fall weather in prepping this thing for wintertime. I'll talk to you guys real soon. See ya.